This is the most realistic zombie movie I've ever seen, shot entirely from a first-person perspective, giving the audience an incredibly immersive experience, as if they were right in the middle of the disaster unfolding in the film. The story starts with what seems like an ordinary interview at a fire station. Journalist Angela is at the fire station, filming a day in the life of firefighters. However, during the interview, the station suddenly receives an emergency call. Without hesitation, Angela decides to ride along with the firefighters, thinking this could be a rare opportunity to capture some action on film. Little did she know, this would turn out to be her last assignment. When they arrive at the scene, they find the police already there, waiting. The residents of the apartment building are gathered outside in fear, having heard terrifying screams from the apartment of an elderly woman living alone on the second floor. Alarmed, the neighbors had called the authorities, but the police informed the firefighters that the door is locked from the inside, and no one knows what's happening inside. The firefighters immediately prepare to break down the door while Angela continues her commentary, and the cameraman captures everything on film. Once the door is forced open, they are met with a horrific sight. The elderly woman inside is covered in blood. The moment she notices the camera's light, she grows even more agitated. The police officer quickly orders the cameraman to stop filming, but it's too late. The woman suddenly snaps, lunging at the officer and viciously biting into his neck. Panic sets in. The firefighters rush to pull the woman off, but the damage is done, and the horrific scene is all captured on camera. The officer is severely wounded, and the firefighters decide to rush him to the hospital. But as they descend to the ground floor, they make a chilling discovery. The building's iron gates have been locked from the outside. In growing confusion and fear, they hear a message broadcast over a loudspeaker. It announces that the building has been quarantined due to a potential viral outbreak. No one is allowed to leave until health officials arrive to conduct testing. The residents, already on edge, now fall into full-blown panic. What made the situation even more unsettling was the suspicion that the agents on site knew more than they were letting on, yet they refused to divulge any details to the residents. The firefighters tried to calm everyone down, reminding them that their priority was to get the injured police officer out of the building. But before they could act, one of the firefighters who had stayed behind on the upper floors suddenly plummeted from above, dying instantly upon impact. Panic surged as the group rushed upstairs to investigate. At the end of the hallway stood the elderly woman, her face twisted in a grotesque snarl. The agent warned her to stay back, but she let out a terrifying scream and charged at them. In the heat of the moment, the agent had no choice but to open fire, killing the old woman on the spot. Shaken, the group hurried back to the ground floor and desperately tried to open the doors again, but the doors remained locked and the health officials outside were unyielding. Despite the escalating crisis inside, complete with a child running a fever, with no other options, the group was forced to tend to the injured as best they could while awaiting the arrival of the health workers. The agent tried to reassure everyone, telling them that there was no need to panic. He insisted that once the tests were complete, they would all be allowed to leave. Not long after, health officer Alex finally arrived at the scene. The first thing he did was demand that the cameraman stop filming, a clear sign that the situation was even more dangerous and complicated than anyone had anticipated. Despite his warning, Angela and the cameraman decided to secretly continue recording. Instead of providing medical treatment as expected, Alex shockingly restrained the injured and injected them with an unknown substance. Almost immediately, things took a terrifying turn. Those who had been bitten began to transform rapidly after receiving the injection, turning into violent, rabid creatures. Chaos erupted as one of the survivors was bitten, and the rest barely managed to escape, slamming the door shut behind them. But they knew all too well that the glass door wouldn't hold for long against the infected. Frantically, they fled into the main hall, pulling down the metal shutters in a desperate attempt to protect themselves. The gravity of the situation became clear to everyone. The group demanded answers from Alex. Under intense pressure, Alex finally broke down and revealed the horrifying truth. He confessed that the source of this outbreak was a dog from a nearby pet clinic, infected with a mysterious virus that spread through bites. The real shock, however, came when Alex admitted that the infected dog belonged to one of the families living in this very building. Upon hearing this shocking revelation, everyone instinctively turned their gaze toward a mother and her young daughter, who happened to have a pet dog. To make matters worse, the little girl had been ill recently. Alex cautiously moved closer to check on the girl's condition, but before he could get too close, the girl suddenly sprang to life, violently biting her own mother. She then darted up the stairs at an alarming speed clearly having fully transformed into a zombie. Realizing the danger, 
The group quickly restrained the mother by handcuffing her to the stair railing. With no time to lose, they decided to head upstairs in pursuit of the girl. When they reached the second floor, they were horrified to discover that the old lady, who had previously been shot by the agent, was nowhere to be found. The bullets hadn't finished her off after all. Despite this unsettling realization, they pressed on. At last, they located her in a bedroom, standing eerily still. The agent, thinking she might not have fully transformed yet, cautiously approached her, preparing to administer a sedative. However, just as the agent let his guard down and turned his back for a split second, the little girl suddenly lunged forward, sinking her teeth deep into his arm. In that moment, the agent realized he was infected. Without hesitation, he grabbed the girl, retreated into the bedroom, and slammed the door shut. The remaining survivors barely had time to catch their breath before the old lady, now fully transformed into a zombie, reappeared, blocking their path. Thankfully, the firefighter, wielding a heavy sledgehammer, wasted no time and landed two powerful blows, finally taking her down for good. Just as they were preparing to descend, they were shocked to see the building's other residents frantically running upstairs in terror. When they rushed to the ground floor to investigate, they were horrified to find that the metal shutters had been opened, allowing a horde of zombies to pour into the building. With no other option, the group retreated, running back upstairs to escape the approaching undead. Tragically, the mother they had handcuffed earlier stood no chance. She was overtaken and brutally attacked by the zombies. The survivors ran as fast as they could, finally finding temporary refuge in the apartment of an elderly man who lived in the building. Just as they caught their breath, they realized that Alex was nowhere to be found. The old man informed them that Alex had locked himself in a room. Annoyed, the firefighter stormed in to check on him, only for Alex to shout for him to stay away. It turned out that Alex had been bitten by a zombie earlier while pulling down the metal shutter. To prevent himself from harming anyone when he inevitably transformed, he had locked himself inside the room. Meanwhile, the old man and Angela tried to signal for help through the window, but were immediately met with harsh warnings from the military outside. Any attempt to approach the windows would result in them being shot without hesitation. The group was now completely trapped, with no hope of escape. In this moment of despair, the old man suddenly remembered something and urgently said to the firefighter, We can escape through the drainage pipes in the basement. The key is in a room upstairs. Just as he finished speaking, the now-mutated Alex lunged at him, attacking violently. The others tried desperately to pull the old man free, but it was too late. With no other choice, they fled the room, racing upstairs to retrieve the key. To their horror, the upper floors were crawling with zombies. Angela found herself caught by one of them, her situation turning dire. Luckily, the firefighter arrived just in time and rescued her. Even the cameraman, who had been filming the entire ordeal, put down his camera to lend a hand. Together, they managed to take down the zombie and continued their dash upstairs. Suddenly, the cameraman accidentally hit a light switch, plunging the entire floor into darkness. In a panic, he quickly turned on his flashlight. The beam illuminated a zombie standing right in front of them. The firefighter, with lightning reflexes, grabbed the zombie, shielding the others from a fatal attack. They eventually killed the zombie, but not without a terrible cost. The firefighter was bitten during the struggle. Before he could turn, he heroically picked up his hammer and smashed open the door, allowing Angela and the cameraman to retrieve the key from inside the room. When they emerged, it was too late. The firefighter had fully transformed, and a horde of zombies was closing in fast. With no other option, Angela and the cameraman raced upstairs. Just in time, they managed to barricade themselves inside the attic. The attic was eerie and unsettling. The walls were plastered with old newspaper clippings and photos, all detailing recent missing persons cases. Scattered across a desk were research reports that documented horrifying human experiments. Angela turned on a dusty tape recorder, and a chilling recording began to play. It revealed that a doctor had once lived in this very place, conducting illegal virus experiments on humans, which ultimately led to the mutation of his subjects. The infected dog they had previously encountered was clearly not the first victim of this outbreak. As they listened to the terrifying revelation, a loud crash came from above as the ceiling gave way, exposing a hidden room. The cameraman, hoping to find an escape route, cautiously peered inside. But to his horror, he was met with the sight of a lurking zombie. Panic set in, and in the commotion, the camera's light was knocked out, leaving them in near-total darkness. Forced to rely on the night vision mode, the cameraman switched it on, and what it revealed sent shivers down their spines. A gaunt, 
skeletal figure was slowly creeping towards them. Terrified, Angela and the cameraman held their breath, trying not to make a sound. The zombie moved slowly, but steadily, closing the distance. In a desperate attempt to sneak past it, they tried to maneuver around quietly. But just as they thought they were safe, an accidental noise betrayed their position. In the chaos, the zombie tackled the cameraman, and the camera fell to the floor with a loud crash. Angela picked it up, only to witness a horrifying scene. Her colleague had been bitten. The zombie, now aware of her presence, turned its attention towards Angela. She bolted, frantically trying to escape, but in her panic, she tripped and fell hard onto the floor. Desperately, she crawled forward, her hands trembling, while the haunting growls of the zombie echoed in her ears, growing closer and closer. But within moments, she was violently dragged into the pitch-black shadows. The screen went dark. The story ends here.